A husband and wife want to bake their daughter. While their daughter was asleep, the two men carried her into the oven. They carefully put their daughter in the oven. Then they looked at each other, suddenly closed the door of the box. The daughter cried out in despair, kicked it open, climbing out in a hurry. The man didn't give her a chance, goes up, stomped on her. The wife brought tape to seal her mouth. Once again, she was locked in, even when the box door caught the daughter's arm. They didn't even stop. They even wrapped the tape tightly. It seems that they had planned all this for a long time. Seeing that the daughter could not escape, the wife turned on the switch of the oven. Flame instantly ignited. Fortunately, at that moment, a police officer and Emily barged in. Emily pushed the woman away, cut the tape with a knife. The girl was finally rescued. The man tried to take advantage of the opportunity to attack the police officers, but he wasn't as fit as the officer, was smashed on the refrigerator. At this moment, the woman also tried to attack Emily. The officer went forward again, knocked her down directly. Looking back, the father's jaw had been dislocated, but the mother looks at her daughter with fear in her eyes. This movie is not as simple as you think. The best part is in the back. Emily is a child counselor. Three days ago, she came into contact with a family. In a private conversation with the girl Lilith, she said her parents had been trying to kill her. A few days after the conversation, Emily received a distress call from Lilith. She rushed to call a police officer. That's what led to the scene before. In the courtroom, the couple had no argument. They were willing to be sent to jail. It seems that for these two people, as if they were finally relieved. Since then, Emily came to visit Lilith in the hospital. Lilith begged Emily, wanted to live with her. Looking at the girl's innocent eyes, Emily agreed. She took the girl home thought it was the right decision. But little did she know, the real nightmare was just beginning. The next day, Lilith met a boy at a community event. A boy named Diego, another family that Emily hosted. But as soon as Lilith made contact with him, the boy's family had an accident. Diego sent his parents to God. The tool of the crime was a golf club. Officers investigated and found that. That night, Diego received a phone call. It was from Emily's house. But the caller wasn't Emily. They went back to ask Lilith. Lilith said she didn't make the call. During the conversation, the officer felt there was no problem here. So when they left, they said something to Emily. She was lying. Emily was a little unconvinced. But opening the door, Lilith was listening in. This made Emily instantly suspicious. To get her to tell the truth, Emily asked her boyfriend Doug to talk to Lilith. Doug is a psychiatrist. When asked what Lilith was afraid of, she said she was not afraid of anything in this world. She even used sophisticated language. Doug's fear of bees. Doug felt like something was wrong with the kid. Otherwise, she couldn't have said such things. When he got home in the evening, Doug also received a strange phone call. But when he hung up the phone, something terrible happened. He felt like there was something in his ear. He used a cotton swab to pull it out. A giant bee appears. The man was terrified. He rushes to flush it down the drain, just after washing his face. Two more bees come out of his ears. He tramples them all to death. As the bees grew in number, they were all coming out of his ears. They even crawled all over his shirt. He carefully took it off, and threw the shirt into the bathroom, and accidentally hit the toilet, and he fell to his death. No one knows that all this happened. It all had to do with a little girl. At the funeral, Emily was devastated by her boyfriend's death. Lilith tried to comfort her. Emily pulled her hand back. Lilith's eyes instantly became scared. On the way back, Emily couldn't get over her sadness. Lilith, but wiggling her feet to play. This kind of behavior was very surprising to Emily. She felt something was wrong. When she got home, she looked up the video of Lilith's mother's interrogation. It turned out that there were 10 people in her family, and then 8 of the family members died inexplicably. She thinks the reason she and her husband didn't die, Lilith hadn't found a replacement for them. After watching the video, Emily went to prison again. When the men saw her, he knew someone was dead. She told Emily, Lilith is a demon. Ever since she was born, the demon has been in her body. That's why so many people People died. Lilith was adopted by Emily. Lilith had it all planned out. Emily became afraid. She came home and installed a lock on her bedroom. When installing, a screw accidentally fell off. She reached out to feel. Lilith was right outside the door. She wore her hair on her head, returned the screw to Emily and left. Seems to have figured out everything. Emily felt that this was not the way to go. She had to find a new family to adopt her, to get herself out of it. So she went to the adoption home. The person in charge told her, there are no appointments for new families yet. If there is one, I will keep you informed. When Emily picked Lilith up, Lilith seemed to know about it. She used her mind to make the elevator fall quickly. Emily was so scared that she clung to the handrail. But Lilith's face was expressionless. Staring hard at her, the elevator opened. Lilith stepped out, as if threatening her. Don't do it again. It was the end of the day. Emily didn't want to go home. A co-worker came up to her and asked, why don't you go home? At that moment, the phone suddenly rang. It was actually for Emily. Lilith said, you shouldn't leave me home alone. Emily hung up the phone, at the same time disappeared. Emily turned her head. The phone disappeared too. It's eerie all around. It was spooky. When we got back, Lilith knocked on Emily's door in the middle of the night. Emily was inside with a weapon to defend herself. After knocking for a while, the sound disappeared, but the closet rattled again. She opened it slowly. A big face pounces on her. Emily rushed out, and she started running like crazy. She was running for her life in the rain. She kept saying that someone was chasing her, but the driver said, there's no one behind you. After getting out of the car, Emily looked at the empty road. She couldn't believe she was hallucinating. She went to jail again. Lilith's father told 
told her, to get rid of Lilith once and for all, she had to kill her, the only chance to do that was when she was asleep, according to his previous observations, Lilith never slept, the only time she did was when Emily and the officers saved him, when he got back, Lilith was watching the video of her parents, and said don't try to do anything behind his back, you can't get rid of me, right after he said that, Lilith's mother saw her body on fire in the hospital, the father also saw a horrible scene the next day, I'm glad you're getting the help you need daddy. It wasn't long before, the couple died in a struggle. Emily felt that one person could not kill her, so she enlisted the help of a friend from the police department. The friend took out a weapon. He decided to make his move tonight. He just walked into the garage, and he saw a vicious dog. This is what he fears most. Man pulls out his gun, ready to make his move. But as soon as he gets into his car, the dog appeared from behind, a bite on his neck. In the confusion, the man pulled the trigger, and the dog went to God with him. An hour later, Emily received the news of her friend's death. He walks into the living room angry, flips off the TV, tells Lilith to get the hell out of her house. The girl ignores her, still eating her snack. Emily walks up to her, flips the snack off again. The girl finally got angry. Don't yell at me! This scared Emily, she rushed back into the bedroom, locked the three locks on the door, and blocked it with a heavy cabinet. Suddenly, Lilith knocked at the door, said he wanted to come in and sleep with Emily. Emily grabbed a screwdriver from the floor, ready to resist at any moment, but Lilith outside the door was already angry. She smashed the door in anger, the wall was cracked. Under the huge force of the impact, the door and the cabinet quickly disintegrated. Emily hid under the bed and did not dare to come out, but the girl's feet were getting closer. She told Emily, don't let it happen again, then she walked away without looking back. Emily was too scared to move, but she didn't forget to get rid of her. At night, she put sleeping pills in the girl's water. While asleep, Emily set the house on fire with gasoline, thought it was over, but then she turned her head. Lilith was right outside. She told Lilith that the house had accidentally burned down. Now she's taking you to a hotel. Lilith knew it wasn't that simple. She immediately said Emily's greatest fear. It turns out that Emily was in a car accident when she was a child. Her mother died in the accident. Only Emily survived. But in a moment, everything in front of her had changed. It became the scene of the car accident, and the truck in front of them was the same one that hit them. Emily closed her eyes tightly. She couldn't believe it was real. Eventually she overcame her fear, through the truck. At that moment, Emily also finally understood. The girl's power is to make people hallucinate. She stepped on the gas. She drove the car directly into the river. But when she unbuckled her seatbelt to escape, Lilith grabbed her. Emily pushed Lilith away, stuck her in the trunk, and opened the car door, swam out. The demon sank into the abyss forever.